there guys, it's Dirty H here and I'd like to welcome you to my brand new series based on San Francisco. I've been wanting to build a big American city for quite some time but I've never really settled on exactly which one to build. I've come close in the past to building Chicago and there's been a couple of others that I've been really interested in but somebody's beat me to the idea and done a fantastic job so here we are with San Francisco. Now there's a few different reasons why I've chosen San Francisco but I guess the main one would be I wanted to choose an American city that has some recognisable land around it, you know, it has terrain around it that's recognisable. I really enjoy doing the nature detailing and the Golden Gate Bridge and the surrounding land was just a mouth-watering proposition for me to build. I've enjoyed building it and putting it together so much and we've only just begun. So aside from the land surrounding it and the really recognisable bridges, the city is very very interesting. The layout, the height differences, the trams, there's so much to San Francisco and I just thought it would be a really fun city to build and I've learned a few lessons from my last series bombing out a bit early so we're going to spread the detailing out with this one and look to prolong the series a little bit more and hopefully we can build a pretty detailed version of San Francisco without hitting the prop limit. So it's worth noting also that this isn't going to be an absolute replica of San Francisco. What I'm going to look to do here is just try and include all of those really cool spots that make it unique and of course I am going to do my best to to make it you know recognizable obviously. So guys, it's time. Let's jump into this and get started. In my other series, Europe in Detail, I used a height map for the first time to make the map and learning how easy it was from that experience. I've done the same here. Um, the landscape obviously being so recognizable, I wanted to get it as close as possible. So the height map, it's not perfect I think it stretches the image a little bit and narrows it one way but it's closer than I could get building this by hand and the scales not perfect either um, obviously this is going to be a scaled down version of San Francisco there's there's just no way you can build to that 100% scale or I could but it would only end up being one part of the city rather than the whole lot and I've also made the height map large enough to include a lot of the uh, fault line in the background behind the city and it just looks great you can actually really see the edge of the fault line looking at the height map which is just so cool and as you can see from this shot here some of the mountains and hills have come in way over exaggerated like these are much higher and steeper than what it looks like in real life so i'm using this smooth tool um, with the terrain function to just to smooth these out a little bit make them a little bit smaller I guess the most important thing with this was that they were in the correct location. I can modify it from there, but if these aren't in the right place, these mountains to begin with, then the whole map sort of doesn't look right. So once I've smoothed all that out and I'm reasonably happy with it, I can start putting these roads in now. And this was a tedious and meticulous task. The terrain that this one here in particular goes over is crazy. So this is coming in from what would be the north of the map and it's going to come down and across the Golden Gate Bridge and there's going to be a couple of other roads that come in as well and I'm trying to follow where these highways come in from real life obviously. So having a look here at good old Google Earth we can see it goes through a little tunnel and then comes around the side of this ridge and across the bridge. So this is what we're going to look to do here and initially here I'm using a vanilla three-way highway and it's quite large and once we get into the game I upgrade this to a thinner and more appropriate highway. This vanilla one just has too large a footprint I think for the for the type of highway we're going for and I'm pretty sure it's Klus's concrete highways that we use in the end and the Golden Gate Bridge is just magnificent and that's from I think it's from B Squigglehausen so we we hook the old highways up to that. I think I run just a highway to start with and then I come back and upgrade it to his Golden Gate Bridge a bit later. So I jiggle these roads around a little bit more and get them pretty much where I want them and then we can move over to where San Francisco is going to sit and start doing some of the intersections that are going to lead into the city. And again I'm trying to follow these intersections 
just like the real life ones. Obviously they're not exactly the same, but you know, I try and find appropriate roads and just really following the basic idea of the intersection. There's a couple of really iconic intersections and roads in San Francisco and I really wanted to capture those. And there's one particular intersection that I make coming up soon and I am very, very proud of it because intersections are not my strong point whatsoever. So I finish up here putting in the last of these roads we need and then I can go back and start detailing the bridges. I want to get these bridges pretty well bang on before I start making anything in the city. I couldn't wait to get started on this bridge. It just looks so good. B Squigglehausen's done an amazing job creating this. And he's also created it in a network, so it's really easy. You just drag out the segments. Um, you can even upgrade the road to different parts of it. It's just so easy to use, man. And yeah, this looks really good. You guys seen shots of this finished in the opening cinematic, and yeah, I'm really pleased with how this comes out. So much fun. And it's really enjoyable being able to do such a recognisable part of San Francisco so early. And I knew that I had to nail this bridge. It had to be pretty perfect. And I spend a lot of time detailing nature and the edge of the water and the cliffs around it as well. Because I know it's going to be included in a lot of shots of the city. And yeah, I just, I was so excited to do this. I was already well motivated enough before I started, but... Looking at this bridge now and across to where the city's going to be, I mean, I'm just super excited for this series now. I can really start to picture it and yeah, can you tell? <laughs> so once we nail all of that and the bridge is looking good, we move back over to the San Francisco side of the island and I can start detailing these intersections. And like I mentioned earlier, I upgrade some of the roads to thinner, more appropriate ones and... I'm also making a point to use node controller and the intersection marking tool and complete these intersections 100% as we move along. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, that intersection marking tool is just godlike. It is such an amazing mod. Uh, you pair it with the node controller and these intersections are really enjoyable to make now because you can pretty much modify them, move them and get them perfect, you know? Guys like Skibbeth, for instance, they're just amazing with these new mods and what they can do with the roads and stuff. It's quite quite amazing. Anyway, once we've done that intersection, we can move over and start creating the, I'm pretty sure it's called the Bay Bridge. And this one's very, very unique. It goes out to a little island and then bends around and goes over to the other side of the bay. And I've also got to get connections from the highway onto this little island because there is connections there in real life and... I do get them in and I'm really happy with how it comes out and it doesn't follow the real life outlay of the roads exactly. Um, I've sort of just put them in where I can to make it work. Uh, it's quite tricky, quite odd, but yeah, in the end it looks really good. And there's also this like double stacker tunnel going through the island and onto the Bay Bridge, which I'm sure to nail as well. So before I can really get stuck into the Bay Bridge, I have to try and set up these tunnels here and get these roads in the right place so that they line up with the bridge. Now the bridge, if you don't know, is also a double stacker. So it's not a side by side bridge. There's a lower deck for traffic moving out of the city and the top deck moves traffic into the city. So we look to get these roads just in the right place and then I can start detailing around it. And we're also putting the off-ramp and on-ramp onto this little island. One's going to go right around the front of the island and one's just going to sort of branch off in this little cove here. And the detail that you've seen me install just then on the island gets changed a little bit in future as well. We put a little bit more bush and trees and now that that's done, we can move on and carry on with this bay bridge. And again, B Squigglehausen has just knocked it out of the park. This is so easy to use. I've never done anything like this. And it, it's just, I could sit here and watch this all day. It's, it looks really cool with the traffic moving through it as well. Uh, unfortunately, on reflection, this is slightly on the wrong angle. I think it's too much of an acute angle to the shoreline where we're going to build the, the city. But... It's too deep now and I'm not prepared to move any of these little islands. They've come in in this particular fashion from the height map. Um, even though I can see this road is slightly angled, 
I don't think it's going to matter too much, to be honest. It's still going to give off those San Francisco vibes that we're after. So now we move on to the intersection that's immediately on the city side of the Bay Bridge. And again, I'm following the real life version as closely as I can. And the roads stagger here as they split out of the Bay Bridge and into a more traditional side-by-side -side style. It goes into another intersection a little bit further up that I finish here as well. And the square block that you see the inlets and outlets form onto is going to be the grid pattern that the downtown area of the city follows. So I had to make sure that was sort of in the right spot. Now this next behemoth I move on to is by far the biggest intersection I've ever built. Um, it took hours. I think this took me maybe three full days to make just this intersection. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> it's probably not, but we've gone into another lockdown here in New Zealand and I've got plenty of time. So I want to show you guys a photo of this intersection in real life so you can see exactly what I'm sort of working towards. And again, that's not exactly as we would see it in real life, but it's definitely following the infrastructure and the layout of 90% of the intersection. Um, I'm also working on a really steep incline here as well in game so that's worth noting and it doesn't make things any easier but I'm really happy with how that comes out and I can't wait to see what it looks like with all of the buildings and stuff around it. So the next thing I move on to is a train station and I think I'm using the Toronto Union Station here and I put down three platforms I think there's four in real life but three fits in the city a little bit better. And then I just run these train lines in as well. And these are following where they come in from, from real life as well. And there'll be no detailing involved around the station. I just purely want to get these tracks in nice and early. There's also a separate little highway connection that comes in here as well. And I built this with a side-by-side -side highway initially. But then looking a little bit closer at Google Earth, I actually realized this goes back into the same setup as the bay bridge so above deck and below deck highway so i just go and upgrade a small section of this as well and it just happened to go right onto the intersection that i spent three days making so i had to bust part of it and um yeah and redo it to get this new highway on but i'm so glad that i did because you know i, I want to get this as close as i can and these highways look amazing and this runs right through, it looks like an industrial area in the city, so I can't wait to see all that built out later on. Once I had all of the highways and stuff in, I decided I wanted to go back and just modify the terrain a little bit more, smooth it off, maybe to find a few more ridges and valleys and things like that. And I also jumped back on the Steam Workshop and went and downloaded a whole lot of different map themes. So I mess around with some textures and lighting and different things like that, grass colours, and just try and get this looking a little bit better. I noticed that the grass colors a little bit browner than what I would have thought so I look to brown off some of the hills and just really try and 
make this map look a little bit more realistic. So the other thing that you guys might notice is the lack of trees on the map. I don't have many trees on the map whatsoever, especially on this main part of San Francisco where the city's going to be. Um, I haven't really done too much in the way of detailing there whatsoever because I know that it's only going to be removed. The only place I'm really going to look to add trees and any detail at the moment are those areas around the bridges. We will look to add trees obviously in future, but I'm planning on moving out and building pretty much most of this map out. So I'm going to save the trees and stuff until I get to those particular areas and then I might look to do them then. This is going to hopefully help save a bit of frame rate as well. Um, the killer for me with my New Zealand series was the trees. There was three, four, five hundred thousand of them at any given time in any shot, which just killed my frame rate. So in this series, yeah, like I said, I will be installing those trees as we get to those areas. I may do a version of this map for the Steam Workshop um, with some trees and stuff on it, obviously, but that'll only be if you guys want the map. <laughs> so what you see me doing on screen here is putting down some ploppable grass. I think this is Paldemo's ploppable grass. And the reason I've decided to use this rather than um, trees, for instance, is because the scaling next to the bridge has to be right. Obviously, the map scale isn't bang on, so if I'm putting massive trees behind the bridge, it's going to sort of downscale the size of the bridge, if that makes any sense. So I do put bush in here eventually, but I try and keep them very small, and this grass from a distance away from it sort of just looks like little scrubby bushes, which applies the correct scale to the bridge. And because the grass is counted as a prop, um, I'm obviously not going to go plastering these over every hill. I'm just going to keep these around where we're going to see a lot of it, so the bridge in particular. And you can see I've tried to choose a cliff texture that sort of looks like eroded hills, being close to the coastline, and there's lots of this sort of erosion on these hills. So I thought that texture was really nice and with the particular lighting that we have at the moment these cliffs look really good I'm happy as with that texture and I've used the ore and oil functions to change the color of the ground as well to a more browned off so I've browned off the top of these hills and I'm also installing the browned type of grass on the tops of the hills and trying to keep the green grass to the valleys and the last thing you'll see me do in this episode is I use Grey Flames rocks to try and make some of this terrain look a little bit sharper, these points that enter into the sea. One thing that bugs me about the game is there's not enough close control with the terrain, so I've tried to make these points look a little bit more rocky and weathered. Well I hope you guys have enjoyed our very first episode of City Skyline San Francisco and in the next episode we look to install some roading around the downtown area and establish a bit of a grid pattern and also we're going to look to install some of the first iconic buildings in the downtown area. So I hope to see you guys there, enjoy the rest of your day, like the video and subscribe if you want to see more and take it easy. See you later guys.